Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur K. So, Ashby. This is a fascinating, fascinating movie. First of all, really awesome cast. Mickey yeah. Rourke, Emma Watson. I mean, really, Emma Watson. Emma Roberts. <laughs> Emma Roberts. There's enough Emmas in the There's acting a world. Emmas. A lot, a lot of, of Emmas. But you got one of the really good ones. Yeah, she's a gem. <laughs> Talk yeah, to me yeah. about putting this movie together, the inspiration, all that good stuff. Uh, sure. Um, well, with the cast, it was just kind of like a really blessed director life because um, I wrote the script and I sort of knew I wanted Nat Wolf very early. Um, I'd seen him in a few things and I just felt like he was funny and charming and a great actor and um, and then Mickey read the script and flipped out and really loved it and I was in Sydney and got this call and then a few days later I was at Mickey Rourke's house as you do hanging out and um, he just really related to the role and the character of Ashby and we got on really well and I just thought he'd be great. I really wanted the, the older character not to be a sweet old guy. I wanted a really edgy character which, you know, and sweet person but edge and that's what Mickey brings to everything and I just, he felt like he could really bring something people hadn't seen him do before with the role and I think he really did that. And then it was just Nat and I went to his house and we did some scenes together and him and Mickey just was had such good chemistry it was so great and then Emma Roberts came on and you know she was really good friends with Nat and so they had a lovely quality and then Sarah was just a I just really wanted the mum to be funny and not like a weak character that you felt you know I just wanted someone who was funny and strong and kind of looked like Nat's mum and you know I just love her she's such a great to me, I'd seen her in Sarah Polly's film and thought she was a great actor and really funny. And so, you know, Sarah agreed to do it and I was happy. You know? Forget about talking about the movie. Can we talk about what a day at Mickey Rourke's house is like? <laughs> I think I think that's all I want to uh -oh. know. No, no. Uh -oh. Con congratulations, because when you look at uh, this wealth of riches with the cast, the, the real story centers around the relationship between Mickey Rourke's character and Nat Wolf's character. Yeah. And you, you've got two, one... That's one of the, the hottest young properties in Hollywood right now, and Mickey's obviously Mickey. Yeah. Talk to me about that relationship and, and them bringing that to life. Yeah, I think that was... Well, the whole movie sort of rests on the idea of this young guy who he's sort of lost and doesn't be know what he believes in or who he is, and he's got no courage to do anything. And, you know, he happens to live next door to Mickey Rock, and he gets this assignment to... who He doesn't know, just thinks he's a nice old guy and gets an assignment to go and learn something from an older person and... I, would, I just wanted to make a movie that was sort of sort of about the sweet old mentor, but he's not so sweet, and it's a much more complicated... <laughs> there's a big twist. Yeah, there's a big twist, and it's a much more complicated relationship, but you can still get good things from people who aren't perfect, and, you know, you learn more in a way by... But that friendship had to be, um, you know, and this old guy got a second chance at being a dad because he screwed it up the first time, and um, he was coping with the fact he was his death, oncoming death, and... So I just like the idea of a coming of age facing your death movie and that it would be funny and moving and they just, I think their chemistry was great because they always had an edge between them but they always sort of, you could tell they really liked each other but they sort of annoyed each other and they just, I just wanted, and Nat has this great ability that he's very charming but he's also got this naivety and that you believe he wants to believe in people and he really found that he wanted to believe in Mickey and then finds out. You know, I had to have a kid because so many kids could come in and be smart asses or, you know, glib. And he was never that. He's always truthful and he's always very um, heartfelt. And I really wanted that. And Mickey, of course, is Mickey. He's like, you know, he's a legend and he bring, you know, and he brought something, I think, different and really sensitive and funny. It's very funny in this movie, which, um, and very sensitive. And for me, I grew up with him in Barfly and Paper Greenwich Village. So it was really fantastic. That's an interesting scenario right now because... First of all, he's got an enormous 2015 ahead. He's going to be in a monster because he's, he's yeah. him and Ka him and Kara in the next movie. But when you see a young actor, do you know? Did you know right away that he had that ability to, to be authentic and to be truthful? Yeah, I think everything. I mean, he hadn't done like I think when we first talked, he hadn't done. I think he would. He just shot Fault in Our Stars, maybe. Um, but I think I'd seen everything. He'd, all his other movies before that, and I think I just felt like he was always truthful he, he didn't go for the gag but he was really funny when, and got all the gags without you know leaning too hard and he was always he was a very endearing actor on screen and and smart as soon as I talked to him you know we had a Skype and he's a super smart kid and you know and just a 
super lovely, devoted actor, you know, he's committed to being a really good actor. When he's on set with Mickey, does he realize, you know, we were, we were talking about this earlier before we went live with you, is Mickey was one of the edgiest and biggest sex symbols of a generation. Yeah. You know, you for, people tend to forget that between the nine and a half weeks and the wild orc. And I mean, Mickey was the it guy. He totally Do, was. Does, does Nat absorb, did you see there a, a mentoring relationship happening off camera as well? Yeah, I think so. I think you know, I mean, Nat loved, Nat, Nat was a huge Mickey fan and was, you know, that was a real exciting thing for him to be in a film with Mickey and to have all these one-on-one -on -one scenes with Mickey was something he was really looking forward to. And, you know, it, it was great to watch because they, Mick, Nat's really great on his feet and Mickey comes from where you're in the moment and you just keep going. And so they were fantastic together in that way. And you could see, he learned, you can't help but learn things from Mickey. He's like... He's just done it for 40 years and he knows more than any of us about how it all works and he's super sharp and, you know, he's, he's kind of like a one-of-a-kind, unique character. Being a Tribeca, anytime, you know, you get to, to give be part of a festival like this, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, yeah. To come to New York in spring and it's like there's all these great filmmakers and it's just a buzzy city and the festival just is, makes it even more buzzy and it's just great food and bars and people drinking. It's great. <laughs>